everybody. Welcome to our show. I'm John Clay from Better Source Benefits. And uh, this is how to uh, extract the equity and put it to work for you in your, uh, in your medical plan. So it's exciting. Activating healthcare equity is something that I'm passionate about. Uh, it's something that uh, I very often thought about uh, after the fact, because when you're sitting there looking at numbers, a lot of times people don't recognize what impact that uh, money that's buried in your health plan is really costing uh, your, your business instead of working on behalf of your business. So today, welcome again. And today's show is sponsored by none other than Better Source Benefits, www.bettersourcebenefits.com. Open up your browser and get on the uh, Let's Get Started link and uh, book some time. I'm, I'm happy to invest a, uh, a conversation with you to kind of see if we can, we can make a difference for you. Because our mission is to take that horse by the reins, as you'll see on the website. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's 2022. The economic storm is coming. And it's kind of like the helicopters coming off these oak trees. They're falling into our pool. And uh, I'm going to show you a quick picture of, a, of, of the pool. It's actually not mine, but it illustrates pretty well that, uh, you know, many people are in a, in a pool of risk that doesn't have a filter. And uh, one of the things that we're able to do today with strategies and solutions for medical plans is to turn the filter on, clean up the pool, and deliver value to you as a business owner and certainly to your employees in the form of better benefits. So I'll ask you the obvious question, what does your pool look like today? And your employee plan, uh, if you're swimming in that bottom pool, shoo, you got to, ain't nobody got time for that. So let's turn on the filter and again, arrange a, a call, book a meeting at www.bettersourcebenefits.com. Well, let's start with uh, what winning looks like. Got a really nice Polaroid here of, of the winner of last week's Kentucky Derby. Um, last week, Kentucky Derby winner Rich Strike set out uh, an impossible task, 80 to 1 odds, a claiming horse worth $30,000, bought for $30,000. That's equity, folks. And wasn't even supposed to be there, but won it all by being better prepared that day. Um, that, again, is $30,000 for the equity that performed. And, you know, sadly, for most small to mid-sized employers, a health care benefits package is just an operational expense or OPEX. You know, our big box brokers love them, but not because they're similar to a high cost thoroughbred. You know, they've got all the all the trappings and, uh, you know, high cost and big overhead. And uh, they come to you with a renewal with no control over the outcomes. How many times have you seen the favorite go in and lose to a better prepared less expensive cost horse, no control. It is what it is. You know, the equity is not winning. It's tearing up the ticket at the track after every race, you know, a losing game. So the net effect though, is as an employer, you simply put in another percentage increase into your cost accounting structure for overhead or labor and that percentage is what you set for the for the year. You set it and forget it and see what happens next renewal. And, uh, you know, to me, that's running last with a high cost thoroughbred. Again, equity not winning. So, hey, few entrepreneurs look at their medical plan as a human capital or a human investment, cap, human capital investment. I'll get it out of here one of these days. And when you look at it from a human capital investment, that's equity that you're actually putting into the company. 
And uh, the, sadly, the majority of CFOs and COOs and many CEOs defer to HR who rely on their broker, broker to simply try to meet the industry standards with huge chunks of owner equity. Again, used to be health insurance premiums, not that big a deal. Today, health insurance premiums, number two expense on your balance sheet, it needs a little more attention than simply a non p &L responsibility uh, person in your business taking a look at that and saying, oh, well, you know, this is the best we can do. This is what the, the industry standard is. Well, benchmarks don't do a thing. Um, it's time to reevaluate, folks. It's that simple. You know, if you're if you're sitting there hitting the easy button year over year, um, I know there are a lot of drama going on, you know, got pandemic and all these other requirements and industry standards are, are just that. They're a safe hide behind kind of thing. But, you know, status quo advisors work hard to deliver the cheapest solution, expecting that businesses will fall for the promise that they're getting the lowest price possible. Stop it. Spreadsheets don't prevent you from huge opportunity costs and overpaying on your benefits plan. It's that simple. The status quo dysfunctional plans usually do more harm than good to the company's financial situation and certainly to those employees and their financial situations in those households. You know, th think of this, out-of-pocket limits of $5,000. If you have a major healthcare event your salary at $50,000, that's 10% of your gross. If you have an $8,000 out-of-pocket limit, that's 10% of your gross income would be your income at $80,000 per year. I mean, I don't know. Maybe everybody on, on the planet's now got a fifty dollars to $80,000 a year um, gross income for all employees. I don't think so. That's certainly not the case in the majority of the employers that I talk with. So even those, you know, the PPO discounts that they're selling you aren't going to overcome the risk transfer to those employees for those huge out-of-pocket sums. If you save money on health care, you uh, transfer that risk to employees and ridiculously high deductibles and out of cost pocket costs have driven the majority of bankruptcies across the nation. Stop it. Again, where am I going with this? Well, let's talk about winning. Post-pandemic, the labor pool has shrunk. People are coming off government-subsidized free health care. And as an employer, you're trying to sell them on the idea of giving all that up to come back to work trading the financial security of the stay-at-home rocking chair life for the risk of a job that, say, in construction may be dangerous or having long hours or requiring that a person actually show up for work on time. Really? On time. So, you know, if you're looking for that rock star, the best talent, most experienced uh, professionals, they mostly are family guys and gals, and many times they're choosing the competitors. Look no further than your health care benefits. You know, with human capital uh, and their expenses at a premium, uh, many companies have to overpay for employee acquisition. Pulling this simple lever uh, gives you a competitive advantage in doing that. Let's talk about what an investment is, okay? An investment, according to Investopedia, is any mechanism used for generating future income. So let's talk about how we examine your health care plan as an equity investment for your organization and how you look at that on an annual basis and to consider thinking about that um, as equity that's unmanageable. I mean, zero tolerance for unmanageable equity. We want equity per, to perform, right? Again, this, 
flipping the script on the medical plan gives you a simple, efficient lever to lever to pull for vis visible results and uh, and performance for your efforts. So, a couple of couple of points. Look at your demographics. If most of your employees, current or potential, have a great family uh, benefits package, um, it's going to keep and retain your talent. Um, and you can keep your operating costs low because they're generally more apt to take a position at a lower salary when excellent health benefits are provided. Maybe not now because we just covered that it's at an all-time premium, but, you know, stay with me here. Uh, my, next, uh, my next slide here, we're going to talk about a couple of statistics. One, a study conducted by the... Uh, AHIP, the American's Health Insurance Plan, revealed that 46% of respondents said health insurance was either, either a deciding factor or a positive influence when choosing their current job. And salary continues to be the top motivator for them, but benefits are running a close second. The glass door survey that we've got up here on the screen looked at the top factors job seekers are looking for while lowering or looking, excuse me, through the job ads. Look at that. The heavy consideration was given to salary, which came in at 67%. And again, the better benefits at 63% are a number two and then location at 59%. How can your company take advantage of that? Can you make the adjustment, promote it, and deliver what labor market demands? Mm -hmm or continue to give you your, your benefits package a secondary role in the talent acquisition process. It, it's, uh, it's, it's very simple. You one, Once you find the solutions and you implement them, then it makes it easy to go out there and, and attract and retain your top talent. So the next slide is gonna show you where the risk is really going. And to prove my point I've mentioned earlier, we. You know, last show we referred to Bucas, the big healthcare companies, Blue Cross, United, Cigna, Aetna, Humana. Here's a slide that demonstrates their commitment to your bottom line. Notice the light blue line here. Overall inflation for 2019 was flat, but welcome to 2022. And at a six to eight and a half percent inflation rate, you know, gas in Somerset jumped to 429 per gallon this week. And that's just in time for our tourism and boating season. But 429 gas, just like a $9 lunch at the drive through Wendy's, um, has got to be affecting your workforce. I mean, how does that affect your workforce, right? Boom. <laughs> so, uh, you know, as we wrap up here, you know, the questions have to become, how much does it cost you to have non-performing equity trapped in a bad benefits plan. Couple of points, you have bad, high opportunity costs, you've got lower employee morale, you've got employees that are functionally uninsured, you face a constant turnover or retraining rate, and ultimately you, your reputation in the industry is poor because the word travels pretty fast that your benefits suck. Um, and nobody wants that type of review. If you've ever looked at your glass door review, I'd urge you to check it out because the, you might find it shocking what people are saying about your business. Um, you know, again, if you have, um, 150 person medical plan, what could you do with $750,000 of EBITDA delivered to your bottom line? If it's trapped in your medical plan, that's possible. I've got case studies to share with you. Uh, solutions exist to help manage the healthcare supply chain to take control of your OPEX and transition that into CAPEX to deliver the value of transparency, including predictable, measurable, and repeatable results of that equity spend. You can restore financial security to your employees.
and release that trap capital wasted inside that medical plan year over year. That's it. Activating healthcare equity wins. Um, don't think an old claiming horse can't help you win big. Book a meeting with me at www.bettersourcebenefits.com and click the Get Started link, and uh, we'll show you how to make it work. So that's it. Thanks again for tuning in, and we hope to see you on our next show.